Ophelia means daughter. We are the daughters of the women who came before us, and we fight so that our daughters may be free. We are a women-led volunteer organization. Our vision is a world free from patriarchy, where all women and girls are liberated. We seek to contribute to the women's liberation movement by building sisterhood and solidarity among women, locally, nationally, and globally. By amplifying the voices of women, particularly those less often heard or purposefully silenced, and by defending women's human rights. Hello, dear visitors, thank you for coming to the second part of the Philia webinar, Sex Trade Survivors Demanding the Global Change. I am Luba Fine from Philia. 13 exited survivors from 12 different countries are participating in this webinar. And uh, I will introduce our last speaker for today. Uh, thank you for coming to us, uh, Alice Johnson. Alice Johnson from Michigan in the US. Uh, she is a survivor of child abduction, human trafficking, and sexual exploitation. She was trapped in the sex trade for 17 years. After years of recovery and activism, she collected a wealth of knowledge based on hard won experience. Alice Johnson is a human trafficking advocate at Neighborhood Legal Services in Michigan that offer free legal assistance and community resources for housing and trauma support. She is an author and creator of the project Out of the Darkness, who I am now, a survivor's story. She performs and plans survivor-led workshops and mentorship programs. Another project where Alice is involved is uh, the Strip to Thrill, a jail diversion program in Detroit. This is a community service outreach to the exploited and trafficked persons. This program offers specialized services through the court, such as case management, survivor support groups, and mentoring. Alice is an expert speaker on human trafficking and sexual exploitation topics. As a human rights activist, she builds better understanding and new perspective, perspectives through her life experience, strength, and hope. Thank you so much for joining us, Alice. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Um, I just, I wanna start by, you know, talking about some of my experience, you know, um, in America. And as a young girl, I was being trafficked in America and trafficked all over America, not just in one city, not just in one state, but state to state to state. And when I was a minor, I was in places um, that were disguised as massage parlors, brothels, strip clubs, and um, men would come in and buy me with credit cards. And um, I wasn't, I was not allowed to go outside, to go shopping, to have relationships. I wasn't even allowed to speak to, um, you know, certain women. women. Um, I wasn't allowed to go to school. I was, my human rights were taken. My basic rights were taken. Um, and I had no one to advocate for me. In America, the fact that you are a runaway or that you are abandoned, you become um, you know, no longer important. And selling yourself is a means to live. And um, I just think it's very inhumane. And it is um, also a, it's, it's also about class, you know, because when you're looking at one person and you're saying, okay, well, this person should have to sell themselves to eat. But this other person doesn't have to sell themselves to eat. You know, it's unjust. It's unjust to even have that thought process. And 
over those years, I experienced many women who died, many women who were killed by the hands of some people call them plunters, some people call them tricks, you know, some people call them Johns, some people call them buyers, right? And so in America, they actually protect the buyer and um, ostracize the girl who is in need of help. Well, some people will say, well, that's a job. I don't know any job where you go to work and you could come home dead. I don't know any job where you go to work and you can come home with AIDS. I don't know any job where you can work without a social security card or a birth certificate or ID or a bank account or, you know, um, uh, a place to live, even a car. The most of the girls that I encounter and myself included and, and encounter to this day don't have these things. So to say that they're working, it, it's defeatist. How, how, how in, in, in America, right? You're supposed to be able to have the pursuit to happiness. Pursuit to happiness is, you know, me working, me having a job and me building a life for myself. Women in America who are being exploited and trafficked are um, not seen as even human beings. We're classified as prostitutes and in the systems we're seen as derelicts. We're not even seen as a human being. We don't get the same treatment as um, you know, someone who is not exploited. And in America, there is no recovery for her. There's, there's no system or no type of um, organizations and, and things, not enough. They're just now starting to catch on in some states. And, um, but, but, but there's no systems designed to help them. The only systems are out there is once you're a prostitute, that's it. You die there. And one of the reasons why I became a martyr and why I wrote my book and why I became public, it was very challenging for me because I was in, I had been in recovery and I had changed my life and I was working with women. Um, and, you know, my family was like, why would you write this book? Why would you tell people this? Why would you put yourself out there? You, if you never told anybody, no one would know. But I know. And somebody else is taking my place. The fact that I was 12 years old, two weeks, I had just turned 12 years old. Two weeks before my 12th birthday, I was initiated into a life of prostitution. Tw 25 cars lined up around the corner when they set me on the street. Black men, white men, Mexican, all races. I knew my life was over, but I didn't know what was about to happen. I didn't know the extent of how it was over, how my soul would be ripped from me, my, my values, my morals, everything that I had ever stood on and been taught. Even, and, and, and it baffles me that in America, they think that just because you might be a runaway or abandoned or in poverty, that you don't have hopes, that you don't have dreams, that you wanna grow up and be a prostitute. Oh yeah, that's what I wanna do. No, you know, um, and, I remember being locked up in, in juveniles and jails and institutions across the country where I was ostracized from other children because I was seen as a prostitute. I was at, uh, you know, in, at my workplace just not recently. And one of my, my um, supervisors asked me about a case that I got back in 87. And I had to remind him, first of all, in 87, I was 17 years old. You know, even today, people will bring up my past. Even, even after 17 years of recovery, when I walk in a room or people that know me and know my story, I have to walk down being a prostitute. Building relationships, all these things are so hard and so challenging. And then you got a system that says, oh, well, she deserved it. That's what she wanted to do. That's what she signed up for. In America, women die in trap houses. 
they they have these places where you know they sell drugs and and they're pretty much run down and abandoned maybe don't have no water maybe don't have no heat women live in these places and men come and buy them and and how is that a service to a human being how is it a service to a human being if i'm standing on a block right on a street on a street and it's 30 degrees outside and I've been out there three hours and I have nowhere to live, to go. And I'm freezing. I have no ID, no social security card, no birth certificate. I have no job skills. I, I don't even have to have a place to lay my head or to get warm. And a man pulls up beside you and he rolls down the window and the heat hits you. You're going to get in the car. I'm not getting in the car to have sex. I'm getting in the car because I don't want to die. And it's 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 not okay for someone to rape me because I want to live. It's not okay for someone to rape me because I have no no means of survival. And and that's that's what is happening. What is happening is is men are raping women. And we're justifying it. We're saying, oh, it's okay because she's 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 de de deprived and, you know, she has to eat. Why is it acceptable anywhere on the planet that I should have to sell my body to eat? This should not be a thing. It is immoral. It is inhuman. It is, it is unjust. It is against God. So how do we as civilized people say that this is okay. I have met hundreds of women in my city, just in my city alone. In the past five years, I've probably encountered a thousand women who've been trafficked, who've been exploited. And in America, it is so normal that the girls don't even know that that's what's going on. <laughs> they don't even realize that, they, they, they don't even know what it is. You say, have you been tra um, have you been trafficked? Have you been exploited? And they don't they don't know what you're talking about. They absolutely do not understand. And so that's why I created the workshops so that I could go and have these sit downs with people that are in shelters and group homes and juveniles and and um in prisons. So I could educate them about what's happening so they can get the help, so that they can ask for help. And then you got the they they they, they in America they have the audacity to have something that is against it. To have a whole system that is against them getting help. And, and, and it just baffles me. I don't even understand it. And they try to, they try to pin, they, they have a, like a smoke screen. Well, there are some that, um, you know, this is their right and they can do this. And you know what I mean? And then they have the other side. And, and, and they put us on the other side. So you have the prostituted, quote, unquote, right? And then you have the trafficked and the exploited. That's an illusion. They're all the same. They're all the same person. And the illusion is, is, is what they don't understand is that if you look at it through a recovery lens, you have those who are still in, and those who are trying to get out. That's what it is. Stop with the smoke screen. There's no two sides. We need to figure out ways and means for them to exit. We need to have enough grace, enough grace to create a space of a way out. How do we entrap people? We entrap them by not giving them the opportunity to grow. They are someone's daughter. They are someone's sister, someone's mother, someone's brother. In, in the LGBT community in America, it is almost like a right to passage. If you're a runaway or you're homeless or you're deprived or your family kicks you out, you can't get a job. Oh, well, we'll just put you on back page. We'll just, you know, you can do these escorts. Like, and, 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 and it's so natural that it is baffling because we die. We die thinking that we were brought to the world 
to be someone's sex object. There were many, many years in my life and I, that helped, the, the one of the things that, that got me through it was because I told myself that it, it had to be me because if it was someone else, they would have died. That I had to do it. And I told myself that, that I was, I was born to be a prostitute. And no one should have to tell themselves that in order to be okay. And, and I, I cry out because all the women in the country right now and in the world right now who are telling themselves, well, I have to do this. This is how I eat. This is who I am. This is what God wanted for me. Do, do you see what we're telling them? We're telling them that this is what God had for you. And when you do that, I want you to put yourself in their shoes. Put yourself in their shoes and tell yourself, how would you survive thinking that God wanted you to be a prostitute? And that that is acceptable. That's just the way it is for you. It should not be acceptable. I will not accept it. That's why I fight so hard to help these women because I know there was many, many years I thought I had nothing to give to the world. That I was just a derelict and, you know, I was just a whore. But over the last 17 years, I have proven all these survivors on the panel have proven that we are so much more. We are so much more. And we can give so much to the world if you just give us a space, give us a space to grow, give us a space to be able to, to live a normal life. And how do we do that? It's uh, cities and states and countries don't want to do the work. Stop being lazy. Yes, it's going to take, it's going to take brainstorming. Yes, it's going to take people coming together getting resources. Yes, it is. It's going to be work helping these women and these men that are trapped in these lifestyles. But we can do it. It's being done in little pockets and places and, 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 and survivors that are, oh my God, my phone died. Yeah, uh, Alice's uh, phone died or something. She, her, she ran out of her battery. Oh, I just so sad that I cannot express my uh, appreciation for uh, uh, Alice's uh, speech. It was amazing. It was moving. Thank you so much, Alice. 